Hey everyone, this is Newman here with Nomino Air Gun Tuning and Repairs, and today I am finally doing the Smooth Twist X uh, disassembly video, or the Smooth Twist X barrel disassembly, uh, where I'm going to go through the barrel and I'm going to show you the different parts, how to take the shroud off the barrel, how to take the um, liner lock off so you can get to the liner, the o-rings on the inside, I'm not going to be taking apart the brass inlet or anything like that, um, but you can see that here and I'll be able to explain all the different parts. Alright, so now we're going to skip to taking off the shroud. Alright, so the first step will be to remove the shroud from the uh, actual barrel itself. So as you can see, I've got the barrel and the vise here. I've got some um, homemade protective covers on my vise so nothing can get scratched on there. It's actually just cardboard covered up with duct tape. Um, but it actually it, it does work. It's not going to scratch the uh, the metal at all because there's there's nothing to scratch. It, it's duct tape is smooth, um, almost like rubbery textures max strength. Anyways, um, not going to scratch the metal. So if it just twists off in a counterclockwise motion. And there you go. It'll slide right on off. And this is a, a Dreamline barrel. It's a smaller shroud than normal. Um, works the same way for the impact shroud and um, yeah, just actually just the impact shroud. And I actually believe the Wildcat shroud comes off the same way. The Crown shroud, uh, it'll it'll screw off like this. And then there's a couple other pieces uh, left on afterwards. In any case, go ahead and pull this on off. Slide the O-ring off that was on there, and this is part of the Dreamline shroud. It just pops right on there. It's kind of a buffer um, to help hold the shroud on. But there you go. There's the Dreamline shroud. Let me go ahead. There you go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set that to the side. So now we're back here to the barrel. I'm gonna uh, reposition everything so it's easy to see. Uh, in, in the camera and also the hold in the vise and I'll show you how to take the liner lock off next So before I, before I zoom in uh, so you can easily see the liner lock uh, Being removed. I just want to show you how I have this in the vise now um, Once again, I've got my protective covers uh, Covering the vise jaws. I've got the barrel nice and locked in. That's not going anywhere it, It's locked down pretty hard um, but you want to be sure not to light down too hard once you just get tight enough. As you can see, I, if I wanted to, I could really still pull this out if I wanted to. Um, you just want it tight enough to where it's not going to rotate. Uh, if you have any tighter than that, you really start cranking down. If you start cranking down this vise, you can bend this uh, the barrel housing or, or the liner housing. Uh, and if you if you bend that uh, if you bend or warp the the liner barrel housing, however you want to call it. Uh, that can definitely cause some serious accuracy issues because there's o-rings supporting the liner in there um, and also the liner won't line up straight anymore it'll probably be bent as well um, so it's going to cause some major accuracy issues and you have to replace your barrel and that's going to be really costly that's probably going to cost you several hundred dollars so please do not over tighten uh, a barrel and a vise be sure to be careful use protective uh, uh, covers on your vise jaws and, and just be careful with it. It's, it's an expensive piece of machinery and a, or, or a piece of a gun and you, you don't want to damage it. Alright, so after that, now we're on to the liner lock uh, removal. Okay, so now we are removing the liner lock. That is going to be done with a 10 millimeter open end wrench. So I've got nice and locked down in my, my vise right here. And you'll see there's two flat edges right here in the liner, and it's just counterclockwise, it's just standard screw. It might be on there a little tough, uh, but just be sure just to go ahead and break it free. And it just comes right on out, just like this. Uh, there will never be Loctite on this piece. Uh, Loctite can seep into your barrel and cause some major accuracy issues, so never Loctite it. Uh, just always, just always hand tight, hand, hand, hand off. Uh, you can, like I said, you can use the 10 millimeter wrench to bust it off. There you go. There's your liner. I'm gonna set the stuff to the side. Um, you can use a uh, pair of pliers to lightly grab on right here. 
Uh, you, you don't want to crunch it or anything like that, obviously. But most of the time, it just, it's just hand. Just hand tight. Just like so. So you start sliding out. There's your first O-ring. There's the other two O-rings. So there should be two to three... Uh, two to three O-rings in there generally. Sometimes there's four. I've seen that rarely come from the factory, but most of the time it's between two to three. So there you go. There's your liner. While I'm still zoomed in here, I'm going to show you something. So the uh, breech in will have of the liner will have this notch in it right here. That shows it's the breech end. As you can tell, the, the the muzzle end does not have that. So it's an easy way to tell which way the liner goes. That is important for your twist rate and also your twist direction, uh, which ultimately leads to your accuracy. And also, uh, there is choke at this end. The, the, the liner is choked, so you need to make sure that you do have it in there correctly. Uh, when you go to set it back up, as you can tell, these two rings slid together. So you want to just slide this ring back down. And you kind of want them at equal portions. You got to remember this this much of the end of the liner, about this much, uh, about two to three inches, is taken up with the stainless steel adapter at the breech end of the barrel. And then about two inches up. Uh, up here, inch and a half, two inches is covered up by the liner lock. So you want to be able to space out your O-rings accordingly. So you want one O-ring approximately in the middle of the barrel, one O-ring in the middle, or the middle of the liner. And then also the next one's uh, just about, <clears throat> it depends on the length of your liner. Obviously this is a 600 millimeter. So um, the, the, all, the, all the measurements are different, but I would normally say about one, one about middle, and then the other ones, try to get them at the quarter points. Um, for instance, this one would be about uh, another three to four inches away from the center of the barrel. So just like that. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and set that liner down, we're going to change the camera angle. Okay, so now we have the breech end of the barrel. Uh, here you have your brass transfer port, and here is the, um, it's called the barrel attachment. Uh, it's, it's actually just a stainless steel barrel attachment. Um, or you can sell it, call it a, a coupler or anything like that. Um, the, the brass threads onto it, and the barrel housing also threads onto it internally. There is an O-ring on the inside of this to hold the liner in place. Um, so if you ever use heat or anything like that, be sure to go in there and check that for any damage. You might have to replace it. The only way to get to that would be to remove your barrel housing off it. These are, both of these are locked tight on. Normally the uh, brass is locked tight on with either a, a green or a blue lock tight onto this. And generally, um, I, I've seen a couple different Loctites on this, but generally it's a red Loctite holding the barrel onto the stainless steel attachment or the barrel attachment, um, or the barrel housing onto the barrel attachment. And red is, uh, as we all know, the strong, uh, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, uh, thread lock there is by Loctite. Um, different, there, there's different types of red, but uh, there's a red, I think it's 263 is the strongest, so. Anyways, um... You got your two O-rings here. These uh, seal the air, so whenever the air passes into your transfer port, these two O-rings right here, make sure extra air doesn't blow out the end of your barrel or in the, the end of your shroud or whatever. And this one, make sure you don't get uh, extra air blowing back in your face. Uh, if you get extra air blowing back in your face, it could either be I'll try to show you here in the video. There we go. Your breech seal in there. Need to be your breech seal, or it could be that O ring right there. Um, the breech, the breech seal on the inside, um, your pellet probe sticks through that and it ends up about right there. Uh, whenever you're done, it ends up about right there. So that's how the air goes in through the pellet probe and out the barrel. If your breech seal is gone, then the air is going to blow past the pellet probe and into your face or onto your cheek or so. So you don't want that happening. Just make sure all your O-rings are good always with your barrel. 
Um, they're not holding pressure, they're blocking pressure is what they're actually doing for the barrel. And like I said, the O-ring on the inside here is what helps line up your liner on the inside. It helps give it a snug fit, so if that's uh, improperly installed, so it's the wrong size, or you've melted it or anything like that, you will have accuracy issues. I've seen that plenty of times. Uh, owners trying to um, solve their own O-ring issues and, and disassembly, reassembling their barrel and put the wrong O-ring in there. And they have extreme accuracy issues. And just the simple ring changing it fixes it. Um, in any case, I'm not going to remove these in this video because, like I said, they are Loctite on, and there's no point in to remove some that's Loctite on a perfectly good barrel. So I'm now going to go back through the process of installing the liner into the end here, right back in, um, just so you can see how to do that. I'm gonna do a little bit of it zoomed out. Um, if you're ever interested, I believe the threads right here is uh, it's M14 by 1. If you ever have to do anything with the threads here, um, I'm not 100% positive on that. Uh, in fact, but we can do that together actually, right here on the video. Got a trusty pair of calipers. So go ahead and turn that on. Alright, so we've got that right there. Stick that right there. And try to zoom this in on the camera. So it looks like it's 12 millimeters. It's gonna be 12 by one. Um, I know the pitch is definitely one, um, just from previous experience. Um, but I like just it's an M12 on the inside, and it's M14 on the outside. And there you go. That's a good view. You can see straight through the end of it right there. All right, great. So now, like I said, we're going to install the liner now. All right, so now we have the liner to install back in. And like I said, we're about halfway here. Yeah, uh, yeah about this right there. Quarter of the way there, halfway, and quarter of the way that way. There we go. All right. And like I said, once again, this little notch right here shows that this is the breech end. So, I'm going to go right on in here. That thing real fast. Make sure your O-rings are not dried out. Make sure they are nice and looped up. These are. You want to do just a little slight twisting motion with the O-rings to help them slide on in. Make sure they get past your lip here. Yeah, you pass the lip. Then at this point you'll see I'm only this far but it stopped. That's because it is hitting the uh here let me go ahead and move this forward for you. It's hitting the stainless steel attachment here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fish our way through so you can you can feel uh, there we go, just slid right on it actually. Um, so, whenever you hit it, you, you, you can feel it stop and hit it, and you just need to slowly, just barely move it around just a little bit in there. You're, you're not torquing or anything like that, you're just, you're just gently moving around, finding that hole. And then once you find the hole for the, for the stainless steel down there, it slides right on in, just like that. Then, once again, Take the liner lock, flat notches facing out, screw it in kind of clockwise, and it'll stop on its own once it reaches the liner. Once it's hand tight, that's all it is. Then you're going to take your 10 millimeter, whichever way you're watching the video, 10 millimeter. There we go. Better way for the video. Go from underneath. And just again, it's kind of clockwise. Just slightly. I mean, you don't have to over torque it. Just, just have it lightly in your vise. Don't, don't have it cranked down or anything. Just lightly grab um, 
to where you normally wouldn't be able to turn it with your hands really in the vise. So, but once you know it's tight, is when you're attached down here, and it turns it in your vise. And, and you're not trying to like super torque this or anything. Once again, if you over torque this, it will it'll bend your liner. It, it'll cause it to uh, it'll cause it to bow, just like that. It will just whoop, right there in your in the middle. Uh, so you don't want to do that. Just want just make sure it's tight enough to where this isn't going to back out. This isn't going to get loose. And also your liner is nice and securely snug inside your barrel housing. And then I'm just going to set that down. Grab the shroud. There we go. There's our shroud. <clears throat> and once again, it's the Dreamline shroud. I'm just going to slide right over the end here. And real fast actually before I do that I want to let you know this is actually one half UNF threading on here half inch UNF threading uh, so that would be actually possible to put a moderator straight onto the end of this even though I would not recommend that at all um, the shroud compensator inside here has one half UNF threading and also the adapter on uh, the end of this has one half UNF threading this is just a thread cover that comes with it all right, I'm gonna slide this back on now. Give it a little bit of twist motion to get past that O-ring. Get up to my vise, take it out of the vise. Just shove it on in. And then I'm gonna lock that down the vise again. Once again, not too tight, just tight enough to where it holds in place. And then, uh. Whenever you get a start, you can you can feel whenever you can feel whenever it hits the end. Uh, whenever it hits the end down here, wait. You can, you can feel when it, it's not going to go anymore. Uh, that means that you've reached the threading down here, and it's time to uh, start threading it on. So that's why I'm gonna lock this down the vise, but give it enough room to where I can screw on, and go ahead. Line up the threading, and there we go. Once again, the threading is down there in the end. You just have to, it's just a feel thing. You have to feel whenever it starts engaging, and then you can thread on. Give myself a little bit more room here. And there we go. And once again, you're not, tar you're not torquing down uh, the, the shroud or anything like that. It's just in there snug. If you torque it down too hard, actually, the liner lock. Uh, that would just, in the end of your barrel can get stuck inside the compensator that's right here to where if you go to pull off your shroud it takes your liner lock with it and then you would have to remove your shroud the the compensator out of the end of your shroud um, which would require heat removing lock tie and so that's a huge pain so just be sure not to over torque anything and uh anyways uh that was the smooth twist x barrel for you um uh, that's the entire barrel from the end to end Again, you've got your brass inlet, you've got your barrel attachment inside, you had your liner and your barrel housing. There is two to three O-rings on your liner. Different people have different configurations. You're allowed to put as many as you want to, as few as you want to. Play around with it, find your best accuracy, find your best harmonics. You do you. That's totally up to you. Um, the fact you put two to three on there. And then we've got our shroud here. Oh, and at the end of the liner was the liner lock that holds the liner into the barrel. And after that, we've got our, uh, our shroud. Obviously, this is different for different types of guns. This is a Dreamline shroud, uh, similar to the Streamline as well. Streamline, Dreamline, those two guns. Um, but there you go. There you have it. Uh, another little thing just to let you know. Um, I've mentioned this in other videos before. You might be able to see it here on this. Um, actually, you can definitely see that. The There's a little... Uh, for the Smooth Twist X barrels, uh, the Dreamline, the... Uh, crown and the impact the wildcat does not have this even though it is smooth twist X but the the impact the dreamline and the crown all have this notch right here in the brass inlet because there's a little locator pin inside the block that slides into and locates it as a you know which direction the face to line up perfectly with your transfer pin. Um, but as far as that goes that's the smooth twist X barrel Thank you for watching the barrel series. Uh, this will probably be the last video unless I find a, a barrel that I miss. And then I'll cover that. But uh, until then, thank you very much for watching.